Hello, welcome. Today we're going to be do, doing the uh, aspirin synthesis lab. We are going to acetylate salicylic acid. An acetylation procedure involves taking either a maybe amine or a phenol and treating this with acetic anhydride. So in the top example here, we have aniline being acetylated with acetic anhydride to form this amide, and this is your acetyl group. Here we have phenol reacting with acetic anhydride to give this ester, and once again, this is your acetyl group. In this reaction, we're going to be taking something called salicylic acid. So this is benzoic acid with a hydroxyl group at the ortho position, and we're going to treat this with acetic anhydride with a few drops of phosphoric acid to give aspirin. So this is called salicylic acid, it's found in, for example, the bark of the willow tree, and this is the acetyl group, so this is called acetyl salicylic acid. Otherwise known as aspirin. So what's going on here? What's with the H3PO4? How does this reaction mechanism work? Let me take you through the synthesis, um, the steps in the curved arrow reaction mechanism, okay? So first we have acetic anhydride, and we want to protonate this carbonyl here. Call again two things. You always want to use acid in the first step of your reaction if it's a catalyst and present. And the other thing is you want to always protonate the carbonyl oxygen. This enhances the leaving group ability, all right? And electrophilicity of that uh, molecule there, okay? So uh, we're going to now take our salicylic acid. And we want to use the phenol lone pairs here to attack the carbonyl, okay? The one on the right is uh, activated by that um, protonation event. All right, so you want to keep this hydrogen attached to the oxygen atom because it, that, that bond has not been broken yet. And we'll twist it that way away from the uh, salicylic acid so we can kind of see how things are uh, uh, reacting, okay? So we've attacked the carbonyl carbon here and the electrons have gone up to the uh, oxygen, so now it's a formal charge of zero here, okay? Now, as you know, in a nucleophilic ACL substitution reaction, you have two steps. The nucleophile is going to attack the carbonyl, and then you're gonna kick off the leaving group, okay? The leaving group is going to be acetate here. 
all right? Acetate is going to be the leaving group. Next, what we want to do is uh, epiprepinate here, okay? So uh, water is a little bit present. There's acetate floating around, phosphate and other things. So I'll use acetate here to depropinate. And then we want to kick off the leaving group here. So I'll use uh, lone pairs here. You could use lone pairs over here as well. And there we are, we're uh, just kicking off acetate. And you can almost see the uh, acetyl group there. We have a uh, protonated carbonyl on our acetyl group, and then that's going to be protonate with uh, something in solution like acetate, phosphate, maybe something like that, okay? And that's going to give the uh, final molecule, which is acetyl salicylic acid, okay? So if we could just review really quick here, we can see that uh, the proton is involved. The phosphoric acid is a catalyst. It's involved in protonating the acetic anhydride and making it even more reactive towards nucleophilic acyl substitution. So it's the phenol group of salicylic acid that's going to attack the carbonyl and eventually kick off acetate to give you um, acetyl salicylic acid or aspirin. So let's go get started on the lab now.